All right, hey everybody, so this is Josh Bruce, and today we're gonna to be talking about uh, package design. Um, and you might be thinking, oh God, he's gonna bust out another Apple product. That's actually not the case. We're actually gonna be looking at the Gillette Mach 3 Razor cartridges. So this is actually the first Razor blade I ever got. Um, when Gillette came out with the Mach 3, uh, they started with a, a mail campaign, uh, or at least part of it was a mail campaign. And they would send the handle and like two or three blades, basically, um, saying, hey, look at our thing. Um, and one of the things that I like about Gillette, who started as a uh, safety razor company back in the 1900s, um, is, but what I like about them, or one of the things that I liked, um, is the idea of give people something for free, let them use it. If they get used to it and they like it, then they'll probably continue to purchase it. Now, one of the other parts, like Gillette should get credit for so much stuff with regard to the way um, products are made. Um, I, for good and bad, at least according to some people, right? So um, the idea is uh, the, the best way to make money is to patent something. I remember reading an article from someone who was talking about, um, I believe it was the Mach 3, where basically they had patented the manufacturing methodology for putting three blades together because it's actually a pretty hard problem to solve from an engineering perspective. And basically, while you have something under patent, it's not that you're going to always be the only one to use it. It's that if somebody else wants to use it, they, they certainly can. And you talk licensing rights and, and everything like that. Um, or you get sued if they uh, seem to be making something similar. Um, and the other part is, is that uh, the concept of consumables inside of a product, like build something that can last forever Right, so this hasn't been lasting me since the late 90s, I promise. But um, basically it's it's metal, it's got this nice grip to it. Um, the rubber does wear down eventually, but it takes years, right? This is not the thing. The cartridges are the part where they actually make most of the money, right? People used to complain about this with uh, printers. Uh, you know, the printer ink that comes with the cart, or comes the printer cartridges that come with the printer aren't full cartridges. They're like half or a quarter or something like that. And then you go and you spend $50 on a print cartridge, which is weird considering that you spent $120 on the printer. Um, so anyway, for example, here, these cartridges, uh, there's four of them in here and it says that it's good for up to 60 shaves. Um, now, there's a financial uh, guru, if you will, one of those, uh, uh, people who helps uh, individuals with their finances. And he says that he's been using the same disposable razor for like seven years. Um, and, you know, that's fine. That's cool. No, no problem there. Uh, me, I don't use razors all that much. Like I don't shave that much. Um, and <laughs> this is not why I'm I wanting to talk about this today. What I actually want to talk about is, is actually the reason behind this design of, of this package, right? There's this slope here. Right? Is there is there a function to this, or is it just trying to be nifty? Um, it's not made out of cardboard. It's made out of plastic. There's a security uh, latch on it, um, or a security signal um, inside. Supposedly, I haven't opened it yet. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's why I want to talk about this today because it covers a lot, uh, especially from a company that's pretty hardcore when it comes to um, protecting their their assets, as it were. Um, Oh, and P.S. Uh, Gillette merged with Procter & Gamble in the 1990s, I want to say. No, early 2000s. Sorry. So anyway, yeah, let's uh, switch to the top down and, and see what this has going for it. Okay, so I was having a conversation with someone um, today about uh, user experience design and sort of explaining to them why... Um, like I always feel like I need to give a caveat because so many people, when I talk about user experience or, or some type of design, they're like, oh, well, okay, so you make it look pretty. And no, uh, that's not the case. That's actually not my job, um, at least not for me. Um, I mean, I, I'm decent. I, I, I did go to design school and everything like that, but that's not my job. Um, instead, my job is to understand like human behavior, take into account stakeholder uh, needs and desires, 
so on and so forth, right? Um, and that leads us to here. So with regard to these blades, basically what's gonna most likely happen is uh, Gillette's gonna manufacture them. Kind of a duh moment, right? Um, and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell them wholesale to uh, either distributors or directly to stores. Um, and those stores, standard retail pricing is to mark something up by 60%, which if you divide whatever number um, you want by 0.4, um, then you'll get 60%. And if you do it by 0.3, it'll be 70. If you do it by 0.6, it'll be 40, so on and so forth. Basically, if I'm remembering correctly, um, basically it's the to get the price that you want to set it to, to get a certain margin compared to what you bought it for. And that also means that when you, um, that means that you get, you can mark it down, mark down the item so far, like 60% before it actually becomes a, um, a loss or a neutral um, concept. So if you ever see a store buy a bunch of something and then the next week, uh, all of a sudden it's 30% off, you know, price to move, so to speak, they're still uh, making a decent uh, revenue on it. Uh, now, electronics don't usually get the same markup, the same degree of markup. Um, you know, 20, 30 percent is usually pretty good for electronics because they're just so dang expensive to make anyway. Um, anyhow, so this packaging has actually evolved over time. I remember when I was actively using a, uh, a razor blade. Basically, it used to be made out of like cardboard and not this plastic, which is what it is now. Um, and it used to have this flap in the back that would make it really easy to open. That is completely gone. Um, and yeah, and I'm still not sure what this slope is all, all about. But basically, once the store gets it, it's going to put it on its shelves, right? Or peg hooks, right? And you see that uh, Gillette is supplying a, a spot for the peg hook. And so anyhow, um, I, I, sorry, I, I'm just really having a difficult time with this package, like thinking like, where's this coming from? Um, and so you have to take into consideration those points and you also have to take into consideration um, the points of the uh, reseller uh, or the retailer, uh, as well as the uh, points of the user, right? So now we have the company who's manufacturing it, the retailer, and the actual person who's going to be using it. So if, anyway, and, and that's what sort of, the, the big thing with retailers when it comes to razor blades is that the, these are actually a high theft item. I can't remember, uh, and I haven't looked at the, the stats because I, I'm just shooting this right before I actually want to use this. So I'm kind of like, I just want to use this thing. Um, and so what got me going was that there was no easy way for me to open it. And I thought about it and I was like, why would they do that? Um, you know, it, giving, giving the uh, principle of charity, why would somebody not make this easy to get into? Um, and, you know, from a, manufacturer's perspective, there's really no reason. There's no benefit there. From a retailer perspective, there is benefit because I can't easily just kind of open the box from the back, take the blades out, put the box back on the peg hook and make it look like I was never here. Um, and then even from a, a consumer's perspective, you know, razor blades, probably not a good thing to have out and around if you have kids. Um, and that sort of a thing. So having a package that's difficult, near impossible to open um, is a good thing. Cause I mean, this is not, this plastic backing is not actually glued. It's um, it's a, some kind of a heat press. Um, you can tell with the grid marks and everything like that. Like there's no, there's no physical difference between this film on the back and this piece of plastic shell on the front. They are, they are one. Um, so you, you can't get into it without actually cutting it. And not only that, but there's also this anti-theft um, piece, right? So if you're in a store and, and hopefully we'll be able to actually see where and what kind of anti-theft they're actually using. 
But uh, basically, you know, if you try to walk out of this uh, in your pocket, you know, probably not okay. Of course, if you came in with like a, an X-Acto knife or a box cutting knife, you just, you know, draw an X and be, be done with it. But it, it makes you feel more comfortable. Um, now, with the, with this, this ski slope, uh, if we want to call it that, uh, the only thing that I can imagine is that, you know, if you have all these things sort of stacked in a line and I'm coming in with my right hand, which most people um, probably would, then that gives me space on the back to grab it this way and, and come forward. Uh, me, I usually just grab it with the face, um, you know, with my left hand and, and pull out. So, you know, maybe that's why this, this extra ridge is here. Like, I don't know if there's actually a design or a user need being solved um, here. So with that said, um, you also do get instructions on how it's to be used. All the legal information is where you would expect to find legal information. There's even a QR code um, and some date stamps, the recycle notification. Uh, so it is recyclable plastic. Um, and yeah, so now, on the back, they've got scissors and a cut line, and the cut line is up here, right? Because I, part of me is, uh, in, and when we get to the redux, uh, what we're gonna do is just, you know, probably cut all this part off, uh, maybe, because I try not to delete anything, and I don't know where we're gonna put this razor blade thing. So, anyway, um, like the size of the package basically seems to be the size of the package for the actual design. It's not because the blades are actually in there. But there's a scissor line with, with this cut mark, you know, basically instructing me to cut. Now, icons are pretty much the hardest thing to design on the planet. Because basically with, a, with an image alone, you have to be able to communicate what's going on. Um, people running down the stairs away from something that looks like fire, that sort of a thing. Icons are hard. So let's try this. I have my scissors. And now I'm, if we're being really hardcore about this is what the picture tells me to do, I can't really do that. You know, like it's not it's not designed at least either for right-handed people or it's not designed for me to be looking at this instruction while actually doing it, right? Because if I'm left-handed or right-handed coming from the other side, I can probably get a decent enough grip there and then sort of chop across. Um, but chances are you're, you're not gonna use scissors, right? Um, kitchen knife. So you know, just sort of pop that in, come across. I mean, it's not too hard. And then once you're in, you're in, right? Now, again, remember what I said about this is basically one solid piece now, right? Like, <laughs> and I, I'm not kidding. I was, I was trying that hard, right? I can't, I can't just peel this off right so basically a piece of plastic i don't know if it's one at a time or a multiple set thing but then this iron comes down and presses um heats this portion of the plastic until it's uh, basically fused and then moves on with its life um so let's go ahead and take this out so this is, this is an interesting cut, right? So basically you have this cut down the center, like this die seems kind of interesting. If for no other reason, then I don't understand why these things are perforated unless it makes it easier for a machine to fold, right? Because what you may end up doing is you come down, press all this to, to do all the cut lines, and then, you know, there might be something that actually holds the finished unit up or grabs the scrap and throws it away. 
Um, speaking of which, we should probably do something on um, box cigarette packs at some point because the dyes for those, like there's very minimal waste. It's just one big chain. It's kind of fascinating. Um, whereas here, there's going to be all sorts of kinds of waste, right? Um, like there's nothing indicating to me that you could butt these up real close together. And I've heard of software programs that will actually kind of do it for you where it's like you design something and then feed it through the machine and it shows you what layout you need to get the most, um, the most material for, with the least amount of scrap. So anyway, yeah, I, I can't understand why this is um, perforated. And of course, the only reason that these two edges are a different length is because this one gets curved down and that's to basically compensate for that distance to give it a nice um, finished look with regard to that line. Uh, I don't see inside of here, I don't see anything that indicates a, an anti-theft um, device unless it's actually, sorry, trying to like see through the packaging. Uh, and I don't see it inside of the cardboard itself. So maybe it's actually inside the blades. Yeah, nope, guess not. Sorry, distracted. Okay, so, I mean, that's the outside, not too thrilling uh, and really curious what that anti-theft thing is all about now. So now we're looking at this package here. Um, and this is the same design that I remember from when I was younger getting this. And again, looking at, you know, package design. So that was the outer package. This is the inner package because these are the parts we actually purchased. These are the parts that we actually want. And if you notice, like they're not falling out. Um, and that's because there's actually this little lip here that's a lock that is locking them in. And not only that, and I don't think that the camera is going to be able to pick it up because it's just frosted, is that they are giving you instructions. There's basically a frosted arrow that points down saying, you know, get your, your Mach 3 handle out and insert it this way, right, for each one of these. And there's an arrow for each one of these. And this is such an interesting injection setup because it actually it's it's a top piece that's clear plastic and then there's a bottom piece that's got sort of this frost on it um, and then it's clear where the blades are so you can you know check out the blades and also see this but you can't see the edges for some reason um, so I'm trying I'm trying to figure out like how they, because it is two separate units. Um, so this one gets um, molded and then this one gets molded and then they're brought together. So, and I'm not sure what these flange things are about. Um, I mean, it could be an accessibility helper, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, with that said, I've, I've always loved this, you know, since I was like 16, 17, whatever it was when I got my first one, I've always loved the idea of being able to just put the handle in, grab the blade and be ready to go, right? Because that's the big difference between these razors, uh, and I can't remember what these razors, cartridge razors, uh, that's the big difference between cartridge razors and like something like a safety razor. Because with a safety razor, let me see if I've got mine. Hang on. I don't. Um, I think I left it in Nashville, which is where I'm going. Um, unfortunately, I'm not feel filming there. So anyway, with a safety razor, basically you un you untwist the top, right? And then, so you actually have to take the top off. And this is what uh, Gillette originally made, is they made handles and blades for those. And so... You, you twist the handle to get to the point that you can um, disengage the uh, cap. You put the uh, safety 
the, the blade back in and put it, the cap back on and then tighten it down. Um, and the idea of the safety razor is that it's only exposing enough of the blade to get to shaving as compared to a straight razor, which is just, it's an exposed blade entirely. So I always thought this was great from a user experience perspective, just this idea of plunge, lock, release, and I'm good to go. And then um, basically the ejector has a pretty good throw. So when I get done, right, you know, think about this from a user experience perspective. Uh, if, or rather when I get done, if I'm shaving over the sink or whatever it is, chances are I have some kind of waste basket or something like that. I can basically just push that button and it gets shot into the basket. Um, so again, thought this was a pretty neat design and you know, it pivots. So I don't have to worry too much about the angle that I have, which was one of the complaints with safety razors. Cause if you go at too, too much of an out angle, um, you're no longer shaving yourself. You're basically just pushing the shaving cream around. Um, if you come in at too low of an angle, you can actually start to like shred your skin. And that was the idea here um, was that basically it would get into an angle and remain at that angle um, to your skin to effectively do the shave. Um, so, so that's, that's the packaging and the blade. So, and those are the considerations, right? So there's the manufacturing consideration of how do we save money in the manufacture of this, make something that's interesting and communicative, right? To, to show people. And how do we protect our retailers from the theft, right? Because like I said, these are a high theft item and it kind of depends on, on how you want to go, right? Um, I will say in my store, um, in my grocery store, it's a very competitive little, you know, foot and a half, two foot section of, of an aisle where basically everything is this teal blue kind of feel. Um, and everybody kind of looks the same and they're all about the same size and shape and, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy town, uh, in that aisle. And so going back to what we talked about, well, no, we haven't talked about that yet. Um, still haven't filmed the, the iPhone one, the iPhone redux, uh, basically making, don't make something thinner than your thickest part, right? Than your thickest component. And like I said, I think this, this design, I cannot imagine it being, improved in any way um, because it allows for um, air ventilation, right? So if I actually, you know, set it up against something or, or what have you, air can flow. Also, there's not going to be a vacuum created when I try to pull it out. Um, the lock is exactly where it needs to be. There's no real wiggle room um, or anything like that. Like I can't imagine this design getting improved upon. So that's going to be the core that we work from and so and of course like all of these videos that involve other people's products there's so many questions that i would have to ask and get answered before i could actually effectively redesign a user experience um, now i will say one of the things i just noticed that i find fascinating is notice the angles Right, like this doesn't come straight out. It comes off at an angle and then this actually bevels out. Um, and I'm curious what that's, what that's for. Is this actually beveled a little bit? Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, oh wow. Yeah, check that out. This just shoots 
down um, like it's actually pretty much flush with this I'm wondering if that's so maybe some retailers just stand them up you know um, and if it was if this was straight you wouldn't be able to stand it up yeah that seems to be the, the rationale there so so maybe yeah some people um, because of that theft thing they put them all by the counter so you can always see when somebody's grabbing it all right uh, let's get the notebook all right so let's change to blank paper Make sure we got a good line. This might be too big for me to do this, but <laughs> that little ripple. Um, okay, so I will say this. Um, and I see this all the time, and there used to be a, I'll, I'll try to link to it, but there used to be a thing called the Make My Logo Bigger Cream. And it was basically a bunch of designers um, having a poke at uh, businesses, basically where businesses always like, you know, make my logo bigger. Can you make the logo bigger? I'd like the logo to be bigger. Um, so what I'm going to do, first thing, straight out of the gate, is I'm actually going to uh, make the logo smaller. So if we make the logo smaller, right, that gives us an opportunity to actually um, make this part bigger. Um, because unfortunately, Gillette is a logo type. It is not a jewel, and it doesn't have a jewel variant, right? Because that's one of the things with Apple, right? Apple can use sort of this... Um, this logo type where it's made in the font that they they have and i think they actually specially make their font um, francisco or cisco i can't remember which one they're using now but then they also have what uh, steve jobs called the jewel which is um, the apple with the bite taken out of it that takes up less space um, and you know communicates a lot about their product gillette doesn't have that right it basically has the logo type slightly slanted and then has this one line coming you know into it because they they manufacture razor blades i mean you need need some slices so anyway um but this way we can actually emphasize the mock three part right so put the logo for that model and make it a little bit bigger, right? Um, because when I went shopping, I didn't find, I didn't look at Gillette. I, I just kind of looked for Mach 3. Like that's how I was doing my shopping. Um, and I will say that I grabbed, or I gravitated toward this color because this is kind of the Mach 3 colors. And when you got, uh, even it's basically the color of their, their gel shaving cream. Um, so, you know, good times that and basically what i want to do here is i actually want to i'm going to stack these numbers and letters so i'm going to say you know four and then i'm going to say let's do the equals 60. so we're going to say cartridges i believe they're pretty big in france um, and that's why we have it in french there as well and um we can do up to and jusqua i did not take french i took spanish so don't fault me too much and then 60 shaves per pack um, and then the french equivalent I'm actually thinking now, huh? 
I wonder if we could actually do something a little bit different because I'm really trying to uh, keep this compact, but still be able to um, sort of see what we're talking about at a distance. Um, because I mean, I, I didn't get close to the boxes on the shelves, you know, I'm three, four feet away, um, you know, kind of looking for whatever it is I'm looking for. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do the zoom in here. I wonder if I should start cutting these in Affinity Designer or something. Um, so put that there and then the authentic Mach 3 um, blades, um, put that right underneath it. And this way we, we'd still shrink that vertical space. At least we should be able to shrink that vertical space because we're going to make Gillette again, just that little bit smaller. And then maybe, um, center this whole thing for the Mach three, three, So that way, when that way, I'm not trying to look through the mess, right? Because I've got this blade up here. I've got this anti-theft thing here. I've got the authentic badge here and I've got the, this text down here instead sort of put that peripheral stuff down here. And in fact, let's go ahead and take this, the authentic one and move it a little bit over and then create another one and this is going to be the we have security right oops did I copy that twice you there duplicate this put that up there shrink it down that's what I did sorry I'm still getting used to drawing with this thing so but you know practice makes perfect um, there so now, right, all the stuff that was on the front is still on the front. We have some nice space here, even though we've chopped down the, the height a little bit. Um, and we probably could chop it down a little bit more. Not only that, but we could leave the flare effect back here because this is a, a cut off gradient, almost like it's a um like you're coming into an atmosphere or something and so basically if we had that it would actually position things right on that Mach 3 to basically use a, a reverse type right so this would be um the um Mach 3 black if you will and then this would be all this down here would be the radial flare. So it kind of look like what we already have. Um, but this, the, the name, right? The make and the model is standing out so much better now, um, or would stand out so much better now. So let's go ahead and erase that. Move this. And I actually do want to take better advantage of 
the sides for this information that maybe isn't so important to the end user, right? Um, but they could still see it as part of the packaging. Um, so basically, if we look at, uh, let's see, this left panel here. Um, so this is going to be the left panel. That means we're going to be looking at it from this direction, right? Because we would have, we'd most likely have it in our hands and we'd be looking at it. So um, what are we going to put there? Uh, so let's go ahead and put the comments stuff. So this is the side. So we will do comments with the 800 number. And then this has disclaimer information. I think that has to be, I think there's legal requirements, right? So, cause that's another thing that UX people have to do. Our experienced designers have to do is consider what are the legal requirements. I think if you, in an infographic, if you reference um, some type of footnote or disclaimer with that asterisk, it has to be on the same graphic, right? I can't, I, I shouldn't have to go to, to somewhat, someone's basement and go find it. Um, basically, it has to be on that same level. So we're going to leave that there because we're leaving this here. And then um, I think what we should do as well is go ahead and on that side, Let's also put the PNG logo. PNG. And then the address here. So Gillette PG Cincinnati, Ohio. So now this is gone, this is gone. This here is gone. Um, I think we could probably even bring that 2017 PNG over to that side as well. Uh, I want to leave the barcode here. Again, think of who the stakeholders are and what the life cycle is of this thing, the entire life cycle. So from the moment that it's manufactured or mined all the way into manufacturing to the point that it's distributed to the point that somebody purchases it, who's getting involved with that and how. Um, and so, you know, here we either have a store clerk or it's going to be the person using a self checkout, like the consumer actually using a self checkout. So I think having the barcode still be on the back is probably the best bet. Um, all right. So now we have, Ah, uh, these go with this. So these are basically saying fits all Mach 3 handles. Um, okay, so we're not going to do anything with the bottom. So the bottom is just going to keep that little QR code and, and the uh, serial number or whatever that is. Um, and so now if we get into the back, Right. And this is about make it easy, make it easy for your users. And we talked about uh, in one of the remarkable videos that I don't know if there's a language that starts at the bottom and goes to the top. So most people are going to start at the top or they're going to start looking at the top. And basically what we have is a, you know, an advertisement for what these things are. Um, kind of right, like sharper blades. Who is that for? It's not for somebody who has this and has had it for 20 years. Right. Lubrication strip. Again, not somebody who's new to this pro or not somebody who's had this product for a while is this is somebody who's kind of new to this product um so that to me has less hierarchical value than um all mach 3 cartridges fit all mach 3 handles right and then the french equivalent so 
instead what I want to do is I actually want to bring that up to the top um, and I would actually let the peg um, hole run through it so I almost want to have like the English over here and the French over here so let's do that um, did I make room no <laughs> all right so So this is going to be our peg hook because we're trying to help our retailers out um, with being able to uh, put this onto a shelf. And then we're basically going to say, you know, all uh, Mach 3 uh, cartridges. Um, and if we can, I'd like to size the font in such a way that we can break this in a logical place. So it should be something like all Mach 3 cartridges, new line, fit all Mach 3 handles, right? Um, fit all Mach 3 handles, and then basically we'd have the French equivalent over there. So now we've broken up that space um, and we've taken better advantage of this upper space that's left, uh, which should be able to overcome the fact that we've reduced the height of this thing um, a little bit because we're making more space um, and so now uh, let's go ahead and place the let's place the UPC code I want to do that down here um, and then Because we have all this room over here, now what I want to do is go ahead and put in the slogan. I want to put the logo here, uh, two L's, and it's basically going to be the same or a smaller size than what we have on the uh, the front, and then basically it's going to say, you know, the best a man can get, right? Because that's the slogan um, and has been forever. Uh, which is good. So <laughs> it's good when you have something that lasts. Um, now, the other part is, is that I think we can actually, because this is not, I'm kind of torn on this one, right? Because we could either actually slide this over so it only takes up half the space and then move, I don't need that anymore, um, and then move all of the text onto that right hand side, right? Um, or we could leave it still being the full thing. Basically, I still want this to be slid over to one side. Um, because again, chances are you're, you're, you know what's going on. Um, and if you see the image, you, you might recognize, oh, that's my blade, right? Um, and so, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's assume that the person is going to look at it and is going to basically, once they see it, they're like, yep, that's mine. Um, so if this front piece with having this here isn't enough for them, this could possibly help. And we do maintain sort of the advertisement um, perspective. So let's go ahead and do the blade here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put three different sections because we need that. Uh, and so basically we're going to say, you know, this is the uh, lubrication strip. This is the sharper blades. And this is the um, microfin skin guard. Right? And one of the things I can say is that, uh, or rather one of the things I want to talk about as well is basically that's why one of the reasons I, I constantly use um, Sharpie markers and notebooks is because I can make this design so much tighter and it's already smaller than this, but it still accommodates the product, right? Um, so anyway, so protective, da, da, da. And then, oh yeah, and we've got our two disclaimer pieces so let's go ahead and grab this 
and we can put you know our disclaimer in tiny text just like it is there uh, and yeah there's only two lines of it so now now I don't have to try to find stuff right because with this it's so busy right like the blade is here the text is over here uh, it's got the Mach 3 up here and you know maybe you know that's something that we do want to sort of keep around uh, is that Mach 3 uh, logo somewhere uh, I could take it or leave it because um, we already have it here uh, and so basically like it's just so busy and there's no real grid or hierarchy um, with regard to where am I supposed to go and so by just putting this here like this would also be in that sort of teal other color and bam there you go look here look at me I am different than everything else here and maybe it's actually that black so it looks like the black is actually coming up over the top um, what's next well we've got the uh, the actual razor blade okay little little mini commercial but I've seen Mach 3 enough times I have a Mach 3 handle bam done um, and then I've got the logo and the disclaimers and then the bar card, barcode. Um, same thing with this up here, right? How long does it last? You know, if I'm into certifications and things like that, I've got that covered as well. What does it look like? Because I already have one of these, otherwise I wouldn't be buying cartridges. Um, and yes, that's mine. And then what's the name of it and that sort of a thing. So just a much cleaner thing. And I tell you what, that concept of this thing being able to like stand on its own, that's actually kind of kind of compelling. I do want it to sort of lean back further though. Um, so if we could actually make it where, you know, it's coming down and this part actually comes out a little bit farther than the back, uh, maybe that would help because then it could be placed in a box and that sort of a thing. And if it's you know, basically a backing, some type of backing. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, there we go. And maybe I'll get, uh, get bored and actually do this in Affinity Designer and make that the thumbnail. Um, so let's switch to the, the face cam. All right, so that's package design. And notice that as we went through this and we did this redux, there was so little consideration about, ooh, I like that, or ooh, that's pretty, or oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it had to do with what is somebody doing, right? Even the notion of where to put the logos, where to put uh, identifying text, because again, right, I'm in the shopping center, I don't care, right? I just wanna know, will this work? Yes, done, I'm out, right? Um, I, I'm not here to be sold anything. Um, and for the most part, I don't know, like statistically, how many people are just in the market for a new razor, right? I, I know a lot of people, when whatever first razor they got their hands on, that's the one they're going to use. And um, so anyway, when we got to the design considerations, it had very little to do with anything, make it look better. It had to do with what are the people looking to see? What's the hierarchy of elements that we should have? Well, I want to put Gillette up here so it's immediately seen instead of making it bigger in the middle to try to make it stand out against all this other stuff, right? And of this other competing elements. Instead, just put it up here and give it the most contrast, black against white, right? Um, or white against black, which is higher contrast than this blue, the blue and the teal down here in the white. What's the model? That's probably what else I'm going to be looking for. Oh, I always pick up the Gillette Mach 3, right? At least that's the way I operate. So why not put that up here too, right? So it becomes obvious. Oh, this is a name I recognize. Then give people a way to immediately um, judge and discern, is this the correct one? So we do still have that image of what the blade looks like, but it's down here, right? It's a lower element, hierarchically speaking. And then the part I've never even cared about, like I've never looked at this and been like, how many shaves is this gonna get me? Because um, there's so many other factors involved in that. Um, you know, put that down here. Same thing with this anti-theft thing, like this thing being at the top is kind of creepy. 
um, but move that over to the side, right? Like all of these design considerations were not for aesthetic purposes. They were for functional purposes. That's where I, I, I'm a big proponent of uh, form follows function, right? What is the function of this? Who are the stakeholders? And from there, we can snowball into how to design the thing. So the same thing back here. Make this strip black instead of that teal color. Move it to the top. Divide the languages on either side. So I can see immediately Mach 3, Mach 3, Mach 3, right? As long as you've got a Mach 3 handle, these will work. Done. I can still see what it looks like. So we still have the advertisement. It's still on the back. Uh, so if I am a new user, we're good to go. There's also going to be more white space because we're moving some of this disclaimer and comment and contact information over to the side, uh, which is probably the only part that will actually is actually keepable um, or preservable. Um, move the barcode over here because the only person who cares about that is the store. Um, and the user doesn't care about that in the long run, but get the also put the um, the slogan and everything like that down there at the bottom as well. So that's why I decided to choose that for you know package design and what that looks like is that design is not about just oh make it look pretty, right? Um, and I I am a little bit bitter because this is something that's been a staple in my career of people like, oh, you just make it look pretty. It's like, no, I have to consider human psychology. How do people move? How is the product going to move? So on and so forth. There's there's so much that goes into really good experience design. Um, and that's why when I see good experience design, I'm just like, oh, this is great. Um, I wouldn't classify this as good experience design. I wouldn't classify it as like really, really bad experience design, but I wouldn't classify it as good either. So anyway, with that said, as always, thank you so much for making the time. I definitely do appreciate it and I'll see you around.